in this video we are going to prove that the OLS estimators are unbiased. We are now on to lecture 7 of Inkaizu's Introduction to Econometrics Theory course. First, let's start with the big picture. Econometrics is about linear regression and in particular our favorite method of linear regression our favorite method of finding a straight line of best fit called ordinary least squares or OLS for short. Within that framework there are three big questions we want to answer. The first is why is linear regression useful? The short answer to that is it allows us to hypothesis test. The second is why is OLS usually our favorite method of linear regression? The layman's answer to that is OLS is on average correct and even if it's incorrect it's not incorrect by that much. The slightly more technical answer is that a couple blokes called Gauss and Markov showed with the Gauss-Markov theorem that not only is OLS unbiased but compared to all other unbiased estimators OLS has the smallest variance. The third question we want to answer is what happens when our actually pretty demanding assumptions about the world don't hold and the short answer is often OLS isn't valid and therefore without valid linear regression we cannot hypothesis test anymore. Essentially, it's a bit of a disaster. As we'll see, though, we may be able, with some econometrics wizardry, to repair things a bit and save the situation. The focus for this video, though, is on the second question, the one highlighted in red. Why is OLS usually our favorite method of linear regression? The answer to why OLS is usually our favorite method of linear regression is a two-part answer. The first bit is that OLS is unbiased, and the second is that OLS has the lowest variance of all unbiased estimators. In this video, we are focused on the first bit of that answer, proving that OLS estimators are unbiased. Thinking about going from our true population model in the top right-hand corner, and then sampling from that population to get a sample of XIs and YIs. We then do linear regression on that sample data and we get our OLS linear regression line in the top left hand corner Y is equal to beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat X. However, it turns out to prove OLS estimators are unbiased we need a few assumptions to hold. In fact there are five population assumptions named A1 a2, A3, A4, A5, where the A imaginatively, as ever, stands for assumption. These assumptions are in fact exactly the assumptions referred to in the third question we like to ask, which is what happens if one of our assumptions about the population doesn't hold? They are also why with the question, why is OLS usually our favorite method of linear regression? We say usually instead of all the time. Because OLS isn't always best, it's only best when these assumptions hold. But all of that is for later. For now, let's get into the specifics of the relevant assumptions we need to know to prove that OLS estimators are unbiased. A1 says the true population model is linear. You might think, well, what else could it be? The answer is a whole bunch of other stuff. It could, for example, have multiple explanatory variables. To give an example, think about trying to model wages. You might reasonably think wages are explained by lots of different variables. Maybe years of education, gender, age, race. What we are saying here, though, is there is only one explanatory variable. Only one x to explain our y. Which, if you think about it, is really quite restrictive. It is important to note although we estimate beta 1 and beta 2 there is a maintained assumption that the form of the true population model is this simple linear one and we never test or question otherwise and this is what A1 is saying. 
The extra piece is the error term illustrated here on the diagram. Even though we are saying that the true relationship is this very simple one with just one explanatory variable x, we concede that things are never perfectly linear. And so we need a hopefully small error term to account for the small variation that cannot be explained entirely by the beta 1 plus beta 2 x part. Even though we've included an error term to account for the variation, we cannot explain with the true line by itself. It turns out we have to be really demanding about the properties this unexplained variation, this error term, has. What A2 is saying is that sure, sometimes the error will be positive, as we've illustrated on the graph here, and sure, sometimes the error will be negative, again illustrated on the graph. But what A2 is saying is that on average the error should be zero. This is entirely intuitive. If I asked you to draw a straight line of best fit with a ruler, what would you do? Well, not all the points would be exactly on the straight line you would draw, so you'd have to try and roughly have half the points above and half below. You'd try to balance how far the points were above the line against how far the points are below the line. This is exactly the intuition of A2, where the expectation, the average of the errors, is zero. This is not saying, however, that every error is equal to zero. That would mean all the points are exactly on the straight line, which clearly, looking at the graph, they are not. It's just saying that the average, on average, the errors should be on the line. The final assumption we'll need for today's proofs is that xi are non-random variables. This is sometimes written as xi are non-stochastic or deterministic. To see what we mean by this, consider an example. We have two variables, our favourite two variables, with x being height and y weight. Presumably this linear relationship is increasing as taller people weigh more. There are two ways you could go about sampling this. One could be randomly picking people, and you'll get a distribution of x's with their corresponding y's. But of course, if you took one sample, and then you took another, the distribution of x's, the distribution of heights, might be slightly different each time. Maybe in the first sample, you'd have 5 people over 6 feet tall, and 20 people under 6 feet tall. In the second sample, because you're picking them randomly, you might have a different distribution of x's with just perhaps one person over 6 feet tall and 24 people under 6 feet tall. This despite the fact that both times you pick, you sample 25 people. Compare this to picking up, picking by quota, sampling by quota, where every time you sample, you proactively seek out 20 people under 6 feet tall and 5 people over 6 feet tall. Why is this difference important? Well, in the second case, the x's are deterministic. Before we've sampled a single person, we've already decided how many people of each height we will sample. The only unknown is the y's that correspond to each x. This small difference in sampling makes a huge difference in our assumptions, and ultimately in how easy it is to prove OLS estimators are unbiased. Essentially, this assumption allows us to treat xi as constants, and this makes for much easier computation. A3 and A5, meanwhile, aren't directly necessary for our unbiasedness proof, so we'll leave them out for now. If you're feeling unclear about what each assumption means, don't worry. That probably just means you are actually trying to think about them properly. We will spend a lot more time in the course with these assumptions, so we've got lots of time for them to become second nature. What might help a little bit is that we are now immediately going to try and use these three assumptions to prove OLS's unbiasedness. To do so, though, we'll need a few helpful equations, the first of which is our formula for OLS. It's not the usual form we're used to, though. It's the decomposed formula, where we have beta 2 OLS hat is equal to beta 2, i.e. the population parameter we're trying to estimate, plus the summation of AI UI, where AI is a function of a bunch of x's. The second equation is just the simple definition of beta 1 OLS hat. 
where we've defined the y-intercept as equal to the mean of y, y bar, minus beta 2 OLS hat x bar. We have two aims. The first is to show that our slope formula beta 2 OLS hat is unbiased, i.e. the expectation of beta 2 OLS hat is equal to beta 2. If you remember our definition of unbiasedness, it's that the expectation of the estimator is equal to the population parameter. This is exactly what we have here. And then once we've done that, we want to prove that beta 1 OLS hat is also unbiased. First, let's prove that the slope formula beta 2 OLS hat is unbiased. I should say that in going through both these proofs, as you watch the videos at home, you should look to fill in the two attached note takers. This should help you learn them better. The links to the documents are in the info section below. So step one in proving beta 2 OLS hat is unbiased is we take the decomposed formula. Next, we take expectations.